It used to be straightforward choosing a sim racing wheel. I mean, it still is, but it used to be as well. That being said, it wasn't that many years ago that we really weren't burdened by such malignant forces as choice or competition in the market. That's not the case now, and thanks to the increasing popularity of sim racing, there are dozens out there to choose from. And that's what I hope to help you guys with today, and also a plausible reason for why it looks like I have what can only be described as more wheels than a wheel convention. With me in the studio, I have seven GT wheels, and I've owned a fair few more for good measure. So I'm going to do my best to talk through what I think are the important points, as well as the pros and cons of each of these types of wheel and similar wheels, and hopefully we'll all come out of the other side having learned something, in addition to having aged by around eight to ten minutes. Now, this isn't a what am bestest wheel video, more of just sort of a little overview of what you should probably be looking for. And finally, before we jump into the meaty broth of the video, I should let you guys know that the Fanatec and Turn Racing wheels were provided as review samples, and the Simline wheels have been lent to me for evaluation by Race Anywhere. But this isn't a side-by-side -side review, I'm not going to be making any recommendations about what you should buy, so in theory none of that should factor into what I have to say, as you'll find out in due course. At its most basic, and in my opinion, there are three things which we should be paying attention to when choosing a wheel. Form, function and compatibility. Obviously there is cost as well, but that doesn't fit into the rule of three, and value is so subjective that it's almost entirely pointless to bring up. Almost. GT wheels can be broken down into a few categories. First and foremost, there's all-in-one wheels versus those where the button plate is separate from the rim itself. And then we have full diameter rims, no laughing at the back, versus the formula style cutaway rims. The practical difference between larger and formula style wheel rims is arguably a lot less important in sim racing than it is in a real car where things like access and visibility are probably a bit more important than they are in a sim rig, but it's still something to think about. More important for sim racers is to consider which type of cars they're likely to be racing and if that wheel needs to work across a wide variety of car types. As you would expect, both shapes are well suited to modern GT cars, but a full-size rim won't be much fun on the streets of Monaco in a modern Formula 1 car. Likewise, hustling Sterling Moss's Aston Martin about with a Formula-shaped rim will be pretty unpleasant for your thumbs as they become a significant impediment in your quest to get enough lock. The other consideration is all-in-one versus separate parts, and I think this is more of a personal preference thing. All-in-one wheels tend to look a bit more modern, as that's the trend in modern GT wheel design. And they do look the business, but they really don't offer any practical advantage inside a racing simulator. On the other side of things, if you go for a separate rim and button box, you can always change out your wheel rim or the electronics should your needs, circumstances or number of digits change. And that freedom of choice is something that definitely appeals to me. My favourite combination for a long time has been the Turn Racing R20 with a series of different button plates, but similar rims from the likes of Momo and OMP would do the job just as well. As a final note on form, we should gently insert ourselves into that most delicate of areas, rim size. GT rims tend to fall between 300 and something like 340mm in diameter, which makes them great all-rounders in my opinion. For me, the smaller end of that spectrum seems to be the sweet spot. Smaller wheels can feel a bit awkward in bigger and particularly older cars, while larger wheels can make it difficult to get the fast initial turn in that modern single seaters require. Grip size is also important too. I have a preference for a slightly chunkier grip, but I'm told your hands may vary. It's time to talk about buttons, shifters, displays and connectivity. For the most part, you'll probably know what you need here, but there are a few things to consider that perhaps aren't always obvious. Let's start off with shifters. Sim racers are obsessed with neodymium magnets in their shifters. They're strong, they give great clicky feedback, and well, they taste better than conventional magnets. And as it happens, most aftermarket wheels and button plates seem to come with them as standard these days. In fact, out of this selection, it's only the Thrustmaster Ferrari 599 wheel that doesn't have magnetic shifters. But the reality is they don't really make much of a difference, and many real-world motorsport wheels don't feature them either. In fact, I've had a play about with a couple of real-world wheels that feel a lot like clicking a really cheap mouse button, so, you know, go figure. But putting aside whether that actually matters or not once you get in the sim rig, the shifting field does feel undeniably better with magnetic shifters, so again, I put that in the personal preference box. Next up is button switches and encoders. 
and generally speaking, the more you spend on a wheel, the better these feel, and in theory, the more reliable they are. But since we're not in a real race car, it's not really all that critical in my opinion. For me, the button layout and variety is the main differentiator between all the wheels here and anything else I've seen on the market. For modern GT cars, having access to half a dozen push buttons and a couple of switches, as well as a pair of encoders, is really where it's at for controlling things like pit limiter, radio, lights, brake bias, traction control, and ABS. On top of that, some of the more ecosystem-specific wheels also include things like D-pads or micro joysticks, which can be really helpful when navigating things like pit menus or the black box in iRacing. If you've been sim racing for a little while, you should probably have a good idea about what you're looking for here. And if you haven't been sim racing for a little while, then you should probably wait before you buy your next wheel. Finally, there's displays, which is an area we often see a divergence from the real world wheel and the sim racing replica. Take the two Porsche wheels, for example. The Fanatec version includes an LCD, which isn't present on the rear wheel or on the Simline version. And that choice between realism and functionality is something we run into quite a lot in sim racing. These two wheels show, quite neatly in my opinion, how the approaches differ. Fanatec's offering adds functionality with the display, joystick and funky switch, and it also encloses all of the electronics safely out of the way around the back. Whereas the Simline wheel goes the other way, replicating the bare bones nature of the real world Porsche wheel. And for me, both approaches are equally valid. Now, displays are a really nice thing to have on your wheel, but not everybody uses them, and I actually fall into that second category. If you're the sort of person that leaves the virtual steering wheel turned on in your racing sim, then the chances are you're going to be able to read everything that's on the dash display on the screen itself. So the question is, how much does it actually matter to you? Whereas if you turn it off, obviously you're not going to be able to read that, are you? That all being said, I just don't find myself looking at the wheel that much, to be honest. Now, this is where things get a bit messy. Most of these wheels can be used on most wheelbases, though the ease of which that can be achieved is really quite varied. In fact, it's so varied that I've made this graphic to help explain how these specific products work across the varying sim racing ecosystems, and hopefully you can sort of extrapolate from there. That being said, I've not tested every single one of these combinations, so this graphic should really only be used as a loose guide. And if there's any specific weird combination that you want to use, then reaching out to the manufacturers of the adapters or the USB conversion or just having a search around online is probably not a bad idea first. So far, so dry. And I'm not doing a callback to that whole delicate rim size gag. I'm, I'm above that sort of thing. What this video needs is some good subjective preference spouting, and luckily I'm all about the subjective. Or to put it another way, here's what I look for in a GT style wheel. As mentioned earlier, I'm a fan of wheels at the smaller end of the GT spectrum, which automatically means I'm drawn towards things like the Simline Lamborghini wheel, the Fanatec McLaren wheel, and the Turn Racing rims. Curiously, I found the 300mm Thrustmaster Ferrari wheel to be a bit on the small side, though I suspect that's got more to do with the grip because the 300mm McLaren GT3 wheel is just fine. Go figure. As far as I'm concerned, there's no wrong answers here, and there's lots to like about all of these wheels. Generally speaking, the price point reflects the materials used, the features, and the feeling of quality. So with that in mind, the Fanatec, McLaren, and Thrustmaster offerings sit at the bottom end, the Simline wheels are sort of in the middle ground, and the mix and match setups as well as the Fanatec Porsche wheel are at the top end. But I should note that the differences in quality between all of these wheels is actually quite small, and really beyond the fancy materials and slightly better feeling controls, and in some cases things like a the screen, there isn't all that much to differentiate between them. And ultimately, all of these wheels perform just as well as each other once you're in the cockpit, which leads nicely to this public information film. You do not need more gear. A new wheel will not make you quicker, it will not make you more consistent, and it is not a suitable replacement for human companionship. Once the serotonin rush fades, you're left with a wheel. Nothing more, nothing less. But if that's going to make your sim racing more enjoyable, then that's bally great.